Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Deconstruct. My name's Charlotte and I do DIY and sewing videos. Today we're going to be recreating the fairy dress. The original fairy dress is by Mira Palais. They put out a teaser video earlier this year and it legit broke Instagram, TikTok. It broke the internet because every girl I knew wanted it. I wanted it. And seeing as I knew I probably wouldn't be able to afford the Mira Palais one, I put my so so sewing skills to the test and it took five days of extremely hard work, but I think it paid off. I am so in love with how it turned out. Some of the differences uh, between my recreation and the real one is that I actually made it just like a little bit longer. I, I do like a mini dress, but like in the photos it looked like a little short. Also, the original one had a mesh panel in the back. I decided to forego that and just line the whole entire back section. I also decided to add boning into the bodice to help it stand up a bit better. I don't really trust the rhinestone straps, especially because I sourced my rhinestone chain from AliExpress. It was $10 for a full roll. I don't really trust the integrity of it. So I wanted to be able to uh, alleviate any stress on those straps. I also decided to maintain the straps to be super long down the back and hanging. I think that extra sparkle catches the light and is super pretty. And what was the last thing? Oh yeah, the last thing I did was I added in some bra padding to the cups. Um, this just allows for you to not wear a bra, but just enhances the shape of your chest a little bit. It's really thin, 1 16th of an inch. It, there's no push-up of any sort in this. I think it helps round off the top a little bit better and it just looks perfect. So I also posted um, a little teaser of my own on my TikTok of the dress and you guys blew that video up. I think today it's at like 3.3 million. That is insane. Like I never thought I'd reach an audience that big, but thank you guys for that. And if you are here from TikTok, welcome. Hope you guys stay for a little while. And if you want to learn how to make this dress, how I got glitter all over my sewing room and my studio, then please keep on watching. When I was drafting this top, I made a few twelves, I think that's what they're called. And I just wanted to make sure that this dress was going to work out perfectly. And I wouldn't waste cutting into my material because it was a little bit expensive for the sparkly material especially. So I didn't just make one. I remade the bust part five different times. I'm sewing this kind of structured bustier style top. Um, and it's all self-drafted, so I really don't know what I'm doing. But hopefully we finally got it down pat and we're gonna be cutting out our real pieces next. These are the items that you'll need to make your fairy dress. The only thing that's not shown here is the rhinestone chain, but we'll be doing that later. For the front, you can see that there are two cup pieces outside and an inner piece. Uh, there is a center fold for this front piece right here. There's glitter on my hands, there's glitter on me, there's glitter everywhere. Glitter is about to take over my sewing studio. <laughs> I'm going to be cutting out the front and two back pieces with both my lining and the sparkly outer mesh. And then additionally, I'll be cutting out the cut pieces in the memory foam. Okay, now that we have all our pieces cut out, we'll be sewing this together, starting off with the foam cups. Taking the foam cup, we're gonna use a zigzag stitch to sew it together. I finished off sewing the foam cups. Turned out really well, really happy with those. And now we just got to do the middle seams for both our lining and our sparkly fabric. After sewing the outer and inner cup pieces together, you'll want to notch the seam allowance to allow for ease so that everything can lay flat. Layering up all the cup pieces, I then hand tack them together to help with the next step. Thank you. 
yesterday we finished off doing the cups. You can see all the layers are attached together now. We're going to be removing the hand tack stitches at the end if they are peeking through. But I think we're going to try to attach it to the front piece now. And I'm just going to hand stitch these two layers together so things aren't moving as much um, before we try to sew on the cups. This is the part I'm most worried about and the part that I personally struggled with a lot just to get like that structure right and not have things puckering and things like that. So we're going to take our time. We're going to hand stitch these two together first before attempting the cups on top. You'll want to pin the cups to the front of the dress with good sides facing and sew with a straight stitch. I made sure to take extra care to line everything up carefully as if things get misaligned here, it will cause a domino effect of bad fit down the line. So you're going to take your underwire casing and measure along the foam section of your bra cup and sew that to the seam allowance. I already did this side right here and I just attached it to the seam allowance and we'll be trimming the excess off later so that we can sew it on this outer edge as well. Here, I'm taking my smaller scissors to trim down the seam allowance. You want very little seam allowance under the channel to reduce unnecessary bulk. Flipping the dress over, you'll want to top stitch down the underwire channel following the curve of the cups. The channel casing should cover the bit of seam allowance that was left over. To complete the bustier section of the dress, insert the underwires into the channels. It may be a bit of a snug fit. So the front piece is basically done for now and we're going to move on to doing our zipper in the back. Hopefully things continue going really smoothly. Because so far, things have been going surprisingly well, and I don't want to jinx anything. Or for the invisible zipper, we want it sandwiched between the lining fabric and the sparkly outer fabric. So it looks nice and neat on the inside. Um, it's a little bit extra work, but it definitely finishes off the dress really nicely, so I think it will be worth it. For the zipper, I added in a piece of interfacing to help add support, but later on, I also added in boning sandwiching the zipper between the outer and lining fabric, so as close as possible to the zipper for a clean finish. So the back panels of the outer and lining fabric separately to complete the back section of the dress. Now that our front and back pieces are completed, we just need to sew up the side seams. We're going to be sewing the lining and the outer fabric separately, like what we did back here, where the lining layer is sewn together and then the outer shiny layer is sewn together. All these seams are facing each other so that the inside of our dress is perfectly clean. So I'm just gonna sew up the side seams now and then we'll do a quick try on to see where we're at. Here is a quick try on in between. I've only sewed the side of the lining so far um, just so I could get the fit right and 
<laughs> look at how much excess fabric I had. The cups are fitting really well. The lining that I have doesn't have a lot of like tightness spandexy stretch. So I think what I'm gonna do is add an elastic in and I'm also going to add in some boning on the sides to help the dress stay up a bit. But, but if you can imagine what this will look like, kind of like that. It's super cute. Don't mind the back. <laughs> it's coming along and I'm really excited. I created boning channels on the sides of the dress with some extra lining fabric. The channels ran from the top of the dress to my waistline. I used some clear elastic to reinforce the top of the dress and sewed this down with a slight stretch and a zigzag stitch. So I adjusted the dress, put in the boning, put in some elastic. Gosh, I'm so happy with how the front turned out. Look how glittery and sparkly it is. It's so pretty. I feel like a princess or a fairy. Definitely like a fairy. I still need to finish the hemline. You can see it's kind of a mess and it's like way too long. I'm hoping to put it like where my fingers are ending. I'm gonna finish fitting my dress off camera and then I'll check back in with you guys a little bit later. I spent the morning just adjusting a few minor things because I want it to be perfect. I ended up adding in some boning at the zipper area adding additional support back there to help just have the bodice stand up a bit nicer. I hand tacked the top edge down just to clean it up a little bit. I also hemmed the bottom of the skirt. So I ended up sewing a half inch hem on the lining. And then the outer mesh, I actually just left it as is and just trimmed it to size. So the last part and the best part is to add more glitter to our dress. And we're just gonna be taking this rhinestone chain, I believe this is. So we're gonna be using the 12 and we're going to be hand stitching this on to our top. I have another DIY that has like a rhinestone strap already. So I'll leave that linked up here. The difference between that DIY and this DIY is that the strap is more decorative. It's not really meant to support your dress um, as we don't have a backing to the strap. I'm like a little bit nervous about that, but I mean, I was testing my weight on this like pulling on it and it seems actually pretty sturdy so maybe you'll be okay for a few wears another thing to note is that when you're doing the rhinestone chain it goes underneath the bust and then turns into the straps so you're gonna need a super long piece that goes like underneath the cup of the dress and then over your shoulder that's why i just picked up a roll it was really cheap off of aliexpress it was like ten dollars um obviously you can splurge a bit more if you want fancier stones. Taking some matching thread, you'll want to sew in between the rhinestones, tacking down the metal by looping from one side to the other on the chain and to secure it to the dress. I recommend a good TV show or a podcast and definitely a thimble while sewing on the rhinestone chain. This is what it'll look like once it's been secured on. And here's the final reveal. so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it like i said this project was quite intense so if you end up recreating this fairy dress or any of my other diys be sure to tag me and use the hashtag deconstruct so i can find all your lovely recreations and if you're not already subscribed consider subscribing and down below so you can be up to date on all my new diy and sewing videos i also do post a lot of my smaller projects over on tiktok but maybe i'll bring them over to shorts now that that's a thing on YouTube, so let me know if that's something you guys are interested in, and I'll see you guys next time in another video. Bye! I love this dress. I think it's the best project. It's Honestly, this dress left glitter everywhere, but I think it was worth it because now I have... I can be a fairy! <laughs>
I remember when you were younger, it was always the question of whether you'd be a fairy or a mermaid. I always picked mermaid, but I think now I have to pick fairy. <laughs> Comment down below which one you would have been.